I'm Bobby Monticella. I'm the marketing manager here at Ipsen Solar. And welcome to Solar and Home Battery Storage. Um, thank you so much for coming. So we are your local solar installer. Our warehouse is here in Maryfield, Virginia, and our offices are in Washington, DC. And I wanna introduce our presenters today. We have Patrick Cavanaugh, our sales director, our CEO and co-founder of uh, ABA, and um, Everett Thomas, our Tesla Powerwall expert and residential project manager. So Patrick today is gonna to go over the basics of how home battery storage works with your solar electric system and with net metering and what the benefits are. And then Everett and Hervé will go into the more technical aspects of Powerwall storage and explain how it integrates with your solar to give you better control over your energy use. As they're presenting, please feel free to type your questions in the chat and we'll take the last 15 minutes to answer those questions at the end. Um, so with that, let me turn it over to Patrick who will get us started. All right, everybody, thanks so much for joining us. Um, I would like to uh, sort of begin with an overview of, uh, you know, what we'll be going through today. Um, so, uh, you know, I will be talking about the storage, uh, and as you heard, uh, Irve and Everett will be taking, uh, you know, a lot of the technical side of things and be able to answer all your questions surrounding this. Um, so as you know, uh, you know, here at Ibsen, we are a Tesla Powerwall certified installer. So, um, you know, we're really proud of that. It took a lot of certifications and a lot of training to reach this level um, because we have, uh, you know, we've installed dozens of other types of batteries on the market, but we are very happy to be offering the Powerwall and use that as our go-to battery backup. And there is a lot of reasons that we, uh, you know, only go with the Powerwall. Um, sort of the main two reasons that people want to do a Powerwall at all is the fact that, uh, you know, with a battery backup like the Powerwall, you can run the house uh, or, you know, your business in the event of a power outage. Um, and then to really dive into the weeds, if someone uh, is interested in doing like a uh, you know, solar paired with battery for self-consumption to be, you know, basically completely off the grid or on a time of use rate schedule, uh, the Powerwall is capable of setting that up and uh, doing that for you. Um, sort of the main reasons that we see someone actually get a Powerwall system uh, is typically uh, you know, they are in the market for a generator and they know that they need a battery backup or generator solution for the house, typically because they have medical equipment in the house, computers in the house. Uh, a lot of times someone who's further out uh, in the country, they are on sort of the end of the line, so to speak. Uh, if the power does go out, they often lose water because they're on a well. Uh, and basically everything. Uh, and also they might be uh, without power longer than those of us that live like sort of in larger, uh, you know, cities. Um, and also one of the major reasons to get a power wall now paired with solar is we still have a 26% federal tax credit that's still available. So um, the way the tax credit is written uh, you have to have the battery or power wall backed up by a renewable source. Uh, so that'd be solar in this case. Um, and that is a huge motivating factor for m most of the families that we work with at this point, because when you do the math and you see that you get a 26% tax credit coming back to you, what that means is you're essentially getting the battery at cost from the manufacturer fully installed in your house. So it, it's a fantastic time to be doing that because next year the tax credit will be stair-stepping down to 22% from 26, and then it's gonna be completely gone in two years. So um, it is true that battery prices are slowly coming down, but they're not coming down 26% a, you know, each year. So it's a really, really good time to be doing that. Um, and, you know, we're, like I said, we're really proud to be, you know, using the Powerwall. And a major part of 
the reason that we're proud of it is it's the best value battery on the market. It's sort of the most reliable because the technology is the same technology that's in the Tesla cars. So you're essentially getting a car with without the car, you're just getting the battery. And um, since they are being manufactured on a massive scale, we know that they're available and they're at a much better price point than any other battery on the market. Um, another few pieces uh, that are sort of make the Powerwall unique, uh, which Everett will be able to get into a lot, lot more deeply, is that the Powerwall is a scalable battery. So most families that we work with install two Powerwalls because that pretty much guarantees uh, that they're gonna be able to back up their entire home. Uh, but if you're a farm or business or you know someone that's using a lot more power than someone else, you can scale that battery all the way up to you know nine batteries. Um, so it's, it gives you a lot of storage. Um, so I'm going to hand this off to Irve. Uh, he's the president of our company. He'll be able to sort of walk through the components of the system. Yep. Thanks, Patrick. Um, can you go to the previous slide just quickly? Just want to speak about um, our, our experience with batteries. So um, I, I, I've been dealing with batteries for many, many years. Um, I also designed the first Belgium solar car. Um, I'm from Belgium. Um, and so that solar car also had a battery, a lithium ion battery. And we also designed entire uh, battery management. It was custom made. Um, over the years, I worked with different uh, uh, lead acid batteries at a time, also with a lot of uh, custom made components. Um, we installed um, uh, LG Chem, for example, uh, it wasn't like an LG made battery. We thought like, well, this is totally going to work. Um, and then we also installed Sonon. We installed like a lot of different batteries that you find on the market. And so when Tesla came around and uh, we, we became a certified installer, um, we really um, understood a lot better what that last sentence there means, like you know what you get. A lot of people, when we were working with LG Chem or Sun, all the batteries, like, like, yeah, I want to have storage. I want to have my entire home taken care of. If there was something happening, I wanted to just kick in and, and give me the power I need at, at doing a power outage. And, and a lot of the other systems just, just couldn't get it right to work. Um, so what Tesla does in a nice looking battery that also works and also gives you what you expect, all, it, it's not that easy to achieve, but Tesla achieved it. And so that is why we solely installed Tesla now. We, I'm, I'm done doing all those other designs and all those other battery systems. Like I've done it and no more. So we fully dedicated to Tesla. Um, so I just really want to highlight this that we've, We've installed all those other types, and now we're only doing Tesla for the reason I just mentioned. Um, all right, I'm ready for the next slide, Patrick. Um, so a system layout. Uh, so when you uh, will get a Tesla Powerwall, you see the Powerwall in the middle there, number two, but that's not the only thing you'll get. Um, number one is completely options, like a, a car charger. Number three is, um, uh, an inverter. Um, I, I think that looks like a, a solar inverter. Um, that's not always the case. You could get another uh, bright install uh, SMA or install uh, end phase. Um, so that doesn't always look the same. Sometimes that box is not even there. Um, but like four, five, and six is also what you will get. Six is the easiest one. That's your meter. You already have that on your on your home or building somewhere. Um, five uh, is is something additional panel. It's got a, a backup gateway. That's the communication between Tesla and uh, the grid and, and the Tesla uh, uh, platform. And then four is the main panel. That's where all your breakers are. So you already have four and six in your home already. Um, and so we're not just going to add like the number two, the, the actual power wall in itself. And um, you can also stack power walls. You can go up to uh, eight to 10 power walls. Now, mo most homes, like, like Patrick said, just have two, but you can stack them up. Um, but so, when we do analysis of, of a home to, to make sure we can install a power wall, we then start thinking about all the different aspects that will be installed besides the, the very clearly visible number, number two, the, the power wall itself. Um, there will also some, some connections that need to be made. Um, there are a lot of um, uh, conduits that would also be added. Um, that's not always visible in this picture, um, but don't, don't think you will just get the number two, the power wall you will need the gateway and all those other things that, that comes, that comes with it. 
Um, the last thing on the bottom there of the slide, you see the powwow is usually a power of four. Uh, people expect the powwow to hang on the wall, which is possible, uh, but it is pretty heavy. And so most of the time we put it on the floor. Um, it's still attached to the wall, but it just doesn't hang solely on the wall. So it's totally possible to do it, but most of the time you just put it on the ground, has little feet, uh, easier for everybody. All right, I'll, uh, I'll let Everett uh, take the next slide. Sweet. Thanks, everybody. So now we're getting into the technical specifications for the power walls. Main things that you want to know is the usable energy that a power, power wall can have. That's 13.5 kilowatt hours. Um, and when you're so, charging that with your solar, uh, that's you know a, a common question is how long does it take to have the battery filled up? Well, that depends on the size of your solar system. Um, but we will size that all, out all accordingly um, when we do an analysis on your house. Um, but the main thing that I want you to try and uh, notice about this is it's a 30 amp breaker that the um, that feeds and is backfed by the, by the battery. So if you get two power walls, that means that you would be able to back up up to 60 amps. If you had three power walls, you could back up to 90 amps, and it goes on and on uh, in that sense. Um, it's got a really good warranty as well. Um, it can pretty much operate uh, in temperatures all the way down to like negative four degrees up to 120 degrees. So as far as location on the batteries, we, um, we don't want it to be on the south facing um, corner of a house just because of being exposed to the elements throughout the year. Um, but it can, uh, you know, perform even in very, very cold uh, areas. It's recommended to be in a temperatures of 32 degrees to 80 degrees. So like I said, you don't wanna have it, um, you know, preferably we'd, we'd like to put them in the basement or an inside space kind of thing, but they can go outside as well. Um, it's a NEMA three um, case. So that, um, that means that it is fully waterproof uh, in that sense. Um, and it is wet rated location as well. So, you know, you don't want it to put it directly uh, next to a sink or something like that, but uh, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. So if you go to the next uh, slide for me, please, Patrick. Um, it's just getting more into the specifications on that. But the main thing I want you to know is it's about, it's just under 30 inches um, wide and about 45 inches tall. So that kind of gives you an orientation of um, how big the battery is. And um, we'll get into sort of the specifications of what it, where we can mount it and all of that uh, in a little bit. Uh, next, next slide, please, Mr. Patrick. Uh, so this is a, just a, a quick little breakdown of the uh, a whole home backup system. And as you can see, this, you've got your solar on the far left where that generates the power. It would land in your uh, main panel, depending on the size of your solar system, that would depend on the uh, breaker of that. Uh, the power wall is also connected to that main breaker. The backup gateway is what we use for a monitoring device. Um, that way it, it's essentially an automatic transfer switch if you, um, you know, have any uh, understanding of what ba um, you know, uh, backup generators are and things like that. That's essentially preventing the back feed in the event of the, the grid going down it keeps all of the energy uh, on site at home. And then the utility meter and the grid is, you know, standard stuff. If you go to the next um, page, all right, it's a little bit more intense on this one, but essentially what you have, um, it, this also shows you how you have the Tesla car backup um, wall connector is what it's referred to on this. And in this scenario, you have non-essential um, loads. So, that would be in the instance of if you only had one battery and there was a situ in, a, in a situation that you had something that was more than 30 amps, that would go into the non-essential load center on that. So um, if you get more than one battery, it, it's very often that that pretty much will cover up the entire home and it, you, it would not be required to have a non-essential load center. Um, if you go to the next slide, that will basically break down the uh, non-essential load center. And you can see the only difference in that is the backup gateway is before the main panel of the house. So anything that you don't have um, 
or you don't want backed up by the batteries, that would stay in the main panel, and then the sub panel would have your essential loads. Uh, yeah. So next slide again, please, Mr. Patrick. So as I had said earlier, the power wall is powered by a 30 amp breaker. And the simple install explanation there, it shows that there's a 40 amp breaker uh, powering the solar. And the solar would be able to charge the batteries. Once the batteries are charged, it would be able to achieve all of the goals or all of the load needs for the house. And in the event that all of that's taken care of and it's still sunny out and the solar is producing stuff, it will be able to back feed to the utility meter and essentially give you credit for the energy that it produces. And at that point, your house is essentially a power plant, which is pretty awesome because you'd be producing green energy and sending it back to the grid. And the next slide gives you basic dimensions of what, um, as far as code goes, there needs to be um, you know, six feet in front. It's about five feet uh, above the power walls. And you need to have an, a foot of space between the two power walls. Uh, and that's because the exhaust is on the left side of, or the right side of the battery, and the intake is on the left. So you don't want the exhaust immediately going into the, uh, the battery that's next to it, because it would be uh, hot. It's nothing that's like off-gassing or anything like that. It's purely just a heat cooling um, thing with that. You also need to be able to service the battery, which the access to that is on the, the left side of the battery. So that's another reason that they want to have proper spacing between them. And the backup gateway, uh, as I described, um, that's what we use as a monitoring. Uh, it's the automatic transfer switch kind of thing. So if you go to the next slide, it breaks down. Everett, Everett can, you, uh, can you explain, uh, typically they wouldn't be side by side though. If there's two, they would be coming off yeah, the wall. Uh, correct, correct. Um, you know, we do the ground stacking and you can stack up to three batteries um, consecutively in front of each other. Um, but, uh, if you did have six batteries, you would have three and then you'd need to have a foot of space between them. And then you could have another three. And, you know, I've seen installs that had a lot of batteries, like nine batteries stacked with three, three, and three, but they would have to be spaced out with this general, um, respect kind of thing. Uh, the next slide basically is just saying uh, it's a hundred, you can be a hundred percent self-sufficient in power. Uh, up to seven days of continuous power during an outage. Um, and any given day when the sun's out, the solar is going to recharge the batteries and be able to go that route. And that pretty much concludes the technical side of that. And yeah, I see one question. Can you set up, a, can you set up to charge uh, from solar and the grid? That's a great question. Uh, that was from Dale Ber uh, Berkey, I believe. Um, so it, it, that's entirely contingent on your power company. That's something that we'd have to look into specifically and see how they do with that. Um, the battery is capable of doing that. Um, what is the expected yeah. life, life of the battery? Uh, it has a 10 year warranty on it. I would see, I would say that you would potentially get more than that. There's a specific number of, recharge and discharges that they have, but it's, um, it's it, a lot, um, uh, kind of thing. So it's 3000, I believe. And we can answer, we can put that in the blog. Uh, we'll have answers to all these in the blog. Um, and, uh, yeah, to answer Dale's question, you, you, this is able to charge off the grid and solar at the same time. If, if the solar was not producing enough, uh, because each battery is able to, uh, absorb five kilowatt hours of energy at a given moment. So it is, if, if, if you weren't getting five kilowatt hours of energy, then the grid would also, if it was on, would also be able to charge this. Um, if you guys can still hear me, Teresa and Doug asked, uh, one of the slides mentioned noise level. Can you talk about that a little more in detail? How much noise, noise from what? Um, I never heard of any of these things making any noise. Hervé or Everett, can you guys take that? Yeah, it's... Um, can you go back to your slide six? 
six, it has a noise level at one meter uh, below 40 de decibel at 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, tell me, is it this one right here? Right there. Yeah, you see there on the uh, right side, the bottom right side, noise level yeah, at one yeah, meter. Yeah. But basically, it, I don't really hear making an audible noise. Um, Everett, what about you? Yeah, I've heard of maybe some occasions where there was an instance of that, and it does do a slight hum when it turns on. But as as you can see in that, it's less than forty uh, de decibels, um, or dBA, excuse me. Um, so it does not um, really put up that much a noise, and it's not going to be in livable space either. Um, so you're talking it's going to be in a utility room or on the side of a house. Um, so yeah, rest assured, yeah. it's. Uh, a regular generator, an internal combustion engine, is very much louder than the battery. Um, yeah, I, I want yeah. to ask about that. A lot of times you see like a, a really nice picture of a power wall in the middle of a living room or some, something nice, but that's not where you want to install it. That's just for taking a nice picture, uh, but that's not where we should install it. So it is still a battery. Um, and so we usually put it in the garage. We prefer inside and outside. Uh, just to protect the equipment. Um, yep. Yeah, but not in yeah. living space. Yep. So, well, one last question we've got here. It says to effectively charge a Tesla vehicle, do we need two power walls, 60 amps? Um, so, in the event that you wanted the, um, the power or the car to be charged off the power walls, you would need to do that. Um, you could also just have the solar cha um, charge and then you would be sort of cre credited depending on the time of use or when you were charging the, uh, the car. But um, yeah, if you're just and talking I, from it. I do know that uh, after speaking with Tesla about this a few times and on a few different houses, uh, Tesla, uh, and I'm sure they'll correct me if I'm wrong, but they do not recommend people charging their cars off their batteries for any, uh, at any point. Um, it just, uh, it's just, it's just really inefficient and um, would be pulling so much at, in, a, in a short amount of time that you would be draining the battery very, very quickly and potentially harming it because of that, because that those cars charge such a high amperage that um, they they do not recommend you do it that way. And uh, typically, if the power is out, you're not going to worry too much about your car. It's usually your fridge, your lights, your communications, your well, uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, but it it's been done. Um, can you guys see these other questions, Everett and Hervé? Um, uh, hey, Jay Torres. Hey, good good, good to see you again. Um, uh, on the initial system layout side, you showed several panels, et cetera. Uh, how much of that already installed? Uh, uh, okay, so yeah, he's asking, um, you know, how large of a system do you need? It sounds like how much of that is already installed if I already have a solar system? So, uh, Everett, that seems like a, I feel like a, we could go to this slide. If someone already has a solar system, how much do they already got and how much are we going to be adding? Where'd it go here? We would be adding the batteries. Um, so two, um, you already have the solar inverter in that case. Um, depending on how many batteries you get, you'd either have a, a non-essential load center or a load center. So there's a chance of another one of four. Uh, and then you'd also have five. So mm -hmm. two, four and five would be the uh, additions that would go along with that. Yeah. Um, Kim Young uh, also asked, she says, uh, does the power wall need to be near any of your other solar equipment? That's a good question to piggyback off of AJ's. Yeah. Um, so, Kim, I remember uh, uh, coming back at your home there. Uh, so I remember that I believe we installed in your garage uh, that that inverter, um, and and so it could go in your garage, uh, like a not a completely detached garage, but I believe there was 
some space in the wall there. I may be wrong. I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of system, but I recognize your name. Just wanted to put it out there. Yeah, and, and, and these are all on a case by case basis because, you know, everyone's house is a little different. You know, maybe you've got stuff in the garage that you can't move. Maybe, uh, you know, you have a spot in the basement that you would ideally like the batteries to go. Uh, however, these batteries need to be in a non livable space. So um, a lot of times people have finished basements and they have like, you know, a, a room that they don't ever use that they think would probably be a good spot for this. Uh, to pass fire code, this needs to be like in an unfinished basement setting or on an uh, like a garage or exterior part of the house. Um, that also being said, the battery does need to be on, even if it's an unfinished basement, it needs to be on the exterior wall of the house. So um, there, there's, there's a lot of parameters of locations that we can put these in. So um, the thing that we're doing today, if some if people are interested, uh, we're happy to do like a FaceTime or like a Zoom call where, you know, you, the homeowner, would walk around the house and, you know, we, we can sort of tell you yes and no uh, or you know, maybe. Uh, and if you work with us, you know, we can, uh, you know, figure out a good spot for it um, and usually have an answer pretty quickly if we're able to do a FaceTime. Um, so, uh, Teresa and Doug ask, is the six foot space requirement in front of the battery an absolute necessity? Ours, uh, our only inside option would be in a utility room. That's a good question. So the six, the six feet in front is a recommendation from Tesla. Um, according to the national electric code, you need to just only have three feet of work, workable space in front of a, um, any electrical equipment. So um, that's a case by case basis kind of thing. Um, we could definitely address that. We'll, um, Teresa and Doug, we, um, you know, we'll, we will address that later. Um, yeah. And, uh, and Tony, as Tony asks, uh, could you discuss how the forthcoming V2G would work with the power wall? V2G. I'm not V2G. Uh, vehicle to grid. Okay. So um, actually, it's it's a good question, and I've been asked I asked that question directly to uh, when I was in Reno. We got invited to go see the the Tesla uh, Gigafactory to go uh, uh, talk with the Tesla engineers that design those systems. Uh, so basically, what they said is that it's not clear to them. Um, so it may, they may or may not be working on it. That was their official answer. So, uh, and they said, you know, that's why you can tell everybody. We, we may or may not be working on it. <laughs> so, um, uh, but, but what we know is that it's, it's on their mind. They know about it and they may or may not be working on it, whatever that means. Um, but, but it, it would be, I mean, I would, I would love it because if you have a grid outage, and you have like a, a, a Tesla car, or even another electric car, um, has a gigantic battery in it. Why not use the power store there? Um, once you start explaining it, you start understanding how complicated it is, and all the different items that are need to be aligned to make this this happen. Um, but but it would be would be I would be uh, would be fantastic to have for myself. For example, um, as soon as this advances, I'm sure we will let everybody know. Uh, that is a possibility. Um, let's see. Uh, and then this is a great question from AJ again. Um, he asks, uh, is the life or efficiency of the power wall affected by uh, exterior versus interior installation? No. Uh, in short, it is not. Uh, it's more of a matter of what you plan on drawing from the batteries uh, and using it in that sense. That's going to have more of an impact on it um, than the location of it. Um, and I know, I, I know that it looks like Oliver is trying to ask this question. Um, Oliver, if you could just throw that back in the 
thread, that'd be good. It, it seems like some of yours aren't coming through. There's a bunch of okay. questions in the chat. Do you want me to put those into the into the Q and A, Patrick? Oh, is that? Oh, that's that's my fault then. I, I'm just looking at the Q and A. So, um, Bobby, if you, you have me? more questions, yeah, just throw them in there. Um, okay. Oliver is asking a pricing question. Um, what's the basic cost of the power wall? So, um, there's obviously there's multiple components to it. So if you go on Tesla's website, you know, the, they have all the pricing for the equipment on there. Um, I think that's a big misconception. People say, oh, well, like, you know, you guys are installing it for, you know, essentially $13,000 at the end of the day. You know, I can go to Tesla and get it for like, you know, nine. Well, that's just the equipment cost. Um, that doesn't include uh, permits, installation, inspection, like, you know, the whole works. So um you know once you actually do that and speak with tesla and you know they have their guys come out it's it's like essentially the exact same thing um so uh you know there's typically you know you usually want to go with the company that installed your solar you'd want them to also install the batteries because it it really is a streamlined process from engineering uh just the layout of everything because you know if, if you have us come do the solar and have tesla come do the power wall well, at the end of the day, that cost might actually be higher uh, because they are having to sort of reverse engineer our system, figure out, okay, what did they do? Okay, I, I like that. You know, they have to like figure that out. Um, so it's, you know, there is a um, uh, price scale. So, you know, if you do one, it's, you know, it's, it's right under $13,000. If you do two, it's essentially $20,000. And uh, from there on out, every additional battery for the most part to a point is uh, you're just buying the battery because we're already on site. We're already doing the job. You know, we don't have to charge you twice for the same work we're doing once. Um, so I hope that answers it. Um, if you are interested in a battery, just give us a call and, you know, we'll be happy to actually give you exact pricing for your house based on uh, what I was mentioning, you know, the location, the service run, uh, you know, is it going to be mounted on the wall? Is it going to be made, mounted on the ground? Things like that. So um, each job is custom. There's not a one size fits all price for the batteries. It is it is per job. Um, hey, hey, James, I'm glad you're here. Uh, James, uh, he works at the Danish Embassy. He's asking. As a commercial entity interested in power wall for peak load shaving, um, is this possible? And if so, can you tell us anything about the software in which would be used to control it? Does it come with the power wall? Uh, yeah, and you know, is it additional cost, things like that? Um, so power wall does have a peak load shaving uh, function. Um, my understanding is that it's just all through the app. So, um, you know, you can program it uh, from your smartphone. I don't know on a commercial side, I'm speaking right now on what I've seen residential customers do, um, but it is a function that's there. And the power wall along with the gateway, which is sort of the brains and the computer of the whole system, it's able to read the grid and see, uh, you know, what number one, what time it is, how much energy is going to or from uh, the solar or coming from the grid. And you can program that so that if you know you're going to be, uh, you know, pulling more than a certain threshold, the batteries can kick in at that point. So they are a very smart technology and it is possible. Uh, I just don't know the answer for commercial scale. Um, so we have power walls for the residential market. You have power packs, uh, like kind of commercial scale. Um, uh, its own entity um, in, at Tesla. Um, for small commercial tree fades, I believe they came out recently with like a two or eight volt system. Um, but but it's it's not one hundred percent there yet. So commercial power walls is it's it's not quite there yet. I know they're working on it, uh, and and hopefully we get uh, information that we can start doing those. We've had, for example, the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis asked us to come install uh, power walls. They have like a little hospital on site, 
uh, we did a site visit. We went there and just it's tree face and so it's it's not it's not there yet we cannot as of today we cannot do it yet um i would be very happy once that tree face uh is ready for to install more, more power off but so uh james you have a season 40 volts i believe so it's tree face so it's uh for now it's a no-go unless we have to do like a, a power pack but that the price range there is quite different so um we have to be a little bit more patient We'll let you know when, when we can do it at the embassy. So I see a question or a statement from Blythe. Um, Merritt says it appears that only uh, five kilowatts can be outputted uh, by one power wall. With two power walls, it would be 10 kilowatts. Uh, Patrick, could you go back to slide number six, please? Is this, I don't see numbers. Is this uh, right here? Nope, nope, go back to. Right here. Excellent. Yep. Yep. Okay. So if you look, usable energy for that is 13.5 kilowatt hours. The max continuous use is five kilowatts, and that's at a charge and discharge rate. Um, the main thing that you need to know is it's uh, the overcurrent protection is a 30 amp breaker. And, uh, you know, it's always the million dollar question of how fast is the battery going to discharge. And that really depends uh, what you're drawing from it. If the, the grid's down, uh, it's in the evening, your solar's not producing anything, obviously, um, and you're only using just the battery, or excuse me, just lights, it, it will last a while. But if you um, have a pool pump and you're, you've got a deep freezer that's running and uh, you know, the jacuzzi's on and the air conditioning turns on, the batteries aren't gonna last very long. So it really depends on what your load is, what your what you're assuming or what you want it to consume and that 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 is a, a limiting factor uh, hopefully that answers your question uh blythe or clears that up and verter for one power wall um i don't know if i actually understand that so it's an ac power wall it has a uh inverter in it um but what is the capa uh, capability? What what capability is the inverter for one power wall? I don't I, I don't really understand that question. I'm sorry, Oliver. If if I'm understanding the question correctly, um, we don't want to uh, install a install more than about a seven to eight kilowatt system per power wall. So, um, Oliver, I, I'm not familiar with your system. Uh, I don't know if you have uh, Solar Edge or End Phase as your micro invert your, as your inverters, um, but essentially, you know, we don't want to put more than uh, about 25 panels on one power wall. Uh, so, um, if you had, for example, like a 40 panel system with only a single power wall, we would split things up so that only 25 of those panels are charging that power wall everything else would be tied into your regular home the way that it normally would and sending that power back to the grid in the event of a overproduction. Uh, just that you have a lot of panels and a large inverter, that doesn't mean that it's going to charge the battery up even faster. Um, so, you know, these batteries can only hold a certain, uh, they can only absorb a certain amount of energy at a time. So, um, that inverter question if you have a solar edge 7600 inverter that would be great for one inverter excuse me for one power wall if you had a larger commercial 14 kilowatt inverter or something that's not going to we, that wouldn't work as maybe you would hope for it to um so let's see I see a question a while back from Nancy that says, I was told that uh, certain types of solar inverters could be used, um, only certain types of um, solar inverters could be used with backup battery. Is that true? That may have been in the past, but with what we use, we use a, um, the inverters that we use for solar is actually a micro inverter. The company is called Enphase. We either use IQ7 or IQ7 pluses. Um, the cool thing about that from uh, a solar perspective is we've got a monitoring capability that is panel by panel. 
So instead of looking at what the entire production of your system, you know, a, a whole string or the system is, you can you can look into it on a panel by panel basis. And it comes with an app as well. The user interface on it is really cool. I hope that answers your question, Nancy. Yeah, and that's and like just to sort of piggyback of what Everett was saying, the Powerwall has an inverter built into it. So we we can really tie the Powerwall into pretty much any type of solar inverter that's out there uh, because we can have that inverter create AC energy and then immediately switch it to DC with the built-in inverter within the power wall. So then that energy is then stored. Uh, and then once the battery is full, the gateway, the sort of the brains of the system tell everything that it's full and then your system operates as a normal net metered system. So, you know, I, I like the images of like water with like a bucket of water. Uh, if you're just using this as energy storage, it's, you know, you're filling up the bucket. Once it's full, everything else works the way that it is supposed to. Um, are there any questions that we're not getting to? I feel like this has been pretty, pretty good. Um, well, I'll, I'll give everyone a second to, if you have further questions or would like us to elaborate a little bit further on a question, maybe we didn't answer it uh, to the fullest extent, feel free to throw that in the chat. Uh, but if we don't have anything in the next few minutes, I think we can uh, wrap this up. Um, one thing maybe that I didn't see a question about that we usually get about maintenance, uh, or maybe we already answered that, but a lot of times people say like, well, once I install it, then what? So same with solar, it should just run by itself uh, compared to if you have a backup generator with some gas, uh, you need to run it every, you know, every so often uh, to make sure that when you'll need it, it actually works. But with the battery and, and solar, it just, it just works, that, that's a beauty. Now as a company, we, are, we have an, an O&M division. So we are part of Amicus, which is a solar cooperative of premium solar companies, about one in each state. And we are also part of Amicus O&M, um, and so we're part of a network of, of, of premium solar companies uh, and, and Tesla certified installers that also provide O&M services. So it's kind of those kind of an insurance policy. You shouldn't need it, um, but but if if something goes wrong, we have our own maintenance department, and so we do maintenance on our own systems. Um, but we also do a lot of maintenance on, on just other uh, you know people that went solar with a small little solar company when is not there anymore and now they have a problem and they don't have anybody else to, to reach out to. So we, we provide that service uh, for solar and, 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 and batteries. Um, what we try to stay away from is those really old lead acid batteries that are decomposing and creating chemical issues. Uh, we try to stay away from those. Uh, but with, uh, with, with uh, Tesla, it's, it's actually an entire process to do on him. So that's it it's kind of an insurance policy you shouldn't really need it but if you need it if there is a maintenance issue or question like we, we can respond yeah all right um well uh bobby do you want to take it from here yeah it looks like we answered all the questions and thank you guys all for your presentations and thank you everybody for coming um Please make sure to join us next week. We're doing Technical Solar 101, same time, same place, Wednesday at noon. And you can sign up on our website. Um, and then the following week after that, June 3rd, we're gonna do a really cool presentation with the Sierra Club about um, the Virginia Clean Economy Act, the changes to solar policy in Virginia, and um, the new incentives in Virginia that have come about because of that. So make sure you join us for that. The sign up will be going up on our website soon. So watch out for it. And, um, and thanks everybody for coming. All right. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.